A new tutorial And you better try it out You can always support me On, on Patreon. Patreon Welcome to this tutorial And this is going to be a tutorial Which is going to be very Yeah, easy And I think it will help a lot of beginner Blender users So if you are a beginner You will end up with a very cool render At the end of this tutorial So, the first thing that we are going to do Is delete the default cube and then we're going to add our moon, which is a UV sphere. This moon still looks a little bit blocky, so we are going to click on W and do Shade Smooth. So now we have a nice and smooth shading. The next thing that I want to do is I want to create some color, because this just doesn't really look like a moon yet. So go to Shading, and we are going to create a new material, which we can call Moon. Then, we are not going to bother with this huge node here, just delete it and we're gonna add a diffuse shader so with the diffuse shader you can put the bsdf into the surface of the material output and the diffuse shader is essentially just the color of your model so we can change this color to whatever we want or we can use an image as our texture so shift a search image texture put the color into the color of the diffuse and now we can add a texture so you can get these textures from the link down below, but you will get a 2 or 8K moon diffuse, 2 or 8K moon height, and this texture from Pexels. So just select your moon diffuse, open image, and here we have our moon. So this is essentially what we need to do, but to make this moon a bit more interesting, we want to create some height. To be honest, if you look at the moon, you don't really see any height detail. It is too far away. But in a lot of cool renders or shots or VFX shots, you will actually see some height detail. Just because it's more visually appealing. So we are also going to create that. We can do this with our modifiers. So we can add a modifier and we're going to add a displacement modifier here. You can create a new texture and you can edit this texture down here in the texture properties. Now we can open our texture and we can go here to moon and here I want you to select the height texture. So height and we can see that our displacement is actually working but it is not working the way that we want it. So let's go back to our modifiers and we are going to change the coordinates to UV and the strength is going to be a little bit lower, so maybe 0.1. I personally like to check my height details in the solid viewport shading, because then we cannot get confused with the textures that are already shown. So go back here into the solid viewport shading, and yes, these are the height details. We don't really get a lot of detail. Why is this, you might ask? That is because we have a very limited amount of vertices, of geometry. So we need to add more geometry. How do we do this? We have a modifier called subdivision surface. And a subdivision surface creates more geometry. So every face that we have will be subdivided into four different faces. So now we can put this viewport levels a little bit higher to see what we can do. So it's kind of a preview. And here you can see that, yeah, it looks kind of cool, right? Don't go too high into the viewport levels because it kind of slows your program down. You can go higher in the render if you want because then it will only work when you render your 3D model. So we can put the render at 6. I think that will work. And this looks kind of cool and I might even want to put the strength a bit lower to 0 0.05. Yeah, this looks decent. So we can put the levels back at like 3 just to make sure that Blender doesn't get slow. Now we want to go back into layout and we want to put our camera in the right position. So I like to click on one to go to my front view. You can, by the way, go to one to front view, three to side view, seven for top view and on zero for our camera view. So now we are looking from where the camera looks at. But we are going to click on one and I think this yeah, would look cool. So I'm going to select my camera and then go to view and click on Align View, Align Active Camera to View. So our active camera, which we just selected, then it becomes active, then jumps to our view. So now we are looking from our camera, as you can see by the square around here, and we can change this camera as well. 
when you want to look at something very far away, you want to up your focal length. I personally like to put my focal length at 500 in this case because it's like a planet and it will look cool in this kind of focal length. And what I like to do is put my camera now a little bit further back. So go to item and then you have your transform and location. Just play around with this Y location so it all fits inside of the boundaries of this camera view. Then what I like to do is make sure I go back to the viewport shading or you can even click here on the rendered viewport shading. So does your moon look interesting or do you want to rotate it a little bit? Because I think these craters look way more cool than the more white parts of the moon. So I'm going to use this as my view. So just rotate it until it looks more pleasing to you. And what we like to do next is we like to create some stars in the background. You can do this in multiple ways, but we are just going to add a plane, rotate it around X axis here and scale it a bit up. Then I'm going to move it around the Y axis and make sure that it will still fit in our camera view. So if we go back to the camera view, you see that if you move it further back, you of course need to scale the plane up again. Then go to shading, select this plane, click on new, and we are going to create the stars, right? I'm going to delete the principal shader and just use an emission node. So an emission node essentially just emits light from it. Okay. And you can also change this color, of course. And we are going to do the same as we did with the moon. We're going to add an image texture. So image, image texture, color goes to the color and we're going to open our stars. So I used this texture, open image. The thing is, the texture that we just saw does not have the same resolution as this plane. And what do I mean with that? Let's go to UV editing. You can see that our plane here is square, but the texture is more elongated. So what we need to do is we need to click on U and unwrap this plane. And now you can see that also our UVs just changed. So now that our texture is being uh, shown properly, we can go back to our layout and then just rotate this to whatever we want. Actually, let's go to shading because I think, yeah, it looks cool, but it's way too bright. It kind of takes away from the moon and we want the moon to be our main visual thing that we look at in our scene. So I'm going to put the emission of the plane to 0.1 or maybe even 0.2 because I want the moon to be our main focus. Now what we need to do is we need to create a sun. So select the light. And if you go to the light options here, you can see that we can change the point light to a sun. A sun in Blender works differently than any other lamp because it doesn't really matter where it is in our scene. It doesn't really change. Only the rotation of it matters. So we want to make sure that the rotations are all the way. Let's put it first at zero just to see where our begin point is. Yes. So now it is just pointing downwards and we can start to think about our animation right now, because what do we want to start with and how I like to animate is I like to just grab an extra section in here and make this my timeline. So here we have our timeline and we can choose how long we want this animation to be. Right now we are going to animate inside Eevee. My preview, I actually animated inside cycles, but for a lot of people that just takes way too long and Eevee just takes a few minutes to render a whole animation. So let's stay in Eevee. We can change this amount of frames that we use to 200. And at frame one, I actually want my moon to be dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my sun in such a way so there is no light being cast in the front of the moon. So I'm going to rotate it around X axis uh, for minus 90 degrees and you can see that now the moon is nice and dark right click on this rotation and click on insert keyframe so now we have set a keyframe as you can see here and now at frame 100 i want it to be all lit up like a full moon so i'm gonna rotate my moon around x axis for 180 degrees click on i and then insert keyframe rotation so now what happens from frame one, you can see that it goes from the dark side of the moon to a nice and full moon. 
of course, our sun is a little bit too bright. So you can put the strength way lower. So maybe one or two, and that will work great. And then what we want to happen, we wanted to go back to the dark side of the moon again, right? So I'm going to go to frame 200, rotate my light here 180 degrees, click on I, and then rotation. So now what happens, we have a nice looping animation where the moon is dark, the light starts to cast on there, now it's all the way bright, and then it goes to the dark side again. Very cool. So, is it dark enough, this so-called dark side? Well, we can go here into the world settings, and we can change the color of the world itself, because the world inside Blender also casts a little bit of a, yeah, light. So we can essentially put this a little bit lower in my opinion. Very cool. And now we can look again. What does a full moon look like? This. I think it looks great. So now we have a quite of a dark beginning of our animation. And then we get a very cool moon with displacement and everything. And then it hides again. Right? So these are like kind of the moon cycles that we have. And we want to start rendering this. So before you're going to render this, I highly suggest you also save your file. So go to File save as and then just make up a cool name so here moon youtube tryout or whatever you want save as and then we have saved our file and we can go on and render this as well how do we render this you might ask it's very easy the first thing you want to do is go to output properties and you want to choose a folder in your output here wherever you want to render this file so I'm going here into moon. I'm going to create a folder named EV, then go in there and then click on accept. So normally I would render with PNG. In this case, because this has only 200 frames, it is an EV and it will go quite quick. I could already choose to do it as a movie file. So maybe, I don't know, FFMPEG video. Then if you want to render your animation, you go to render render animation and now it will render your animation piece by piece and that is how we create this animation if you guys want to get access to these tutorial files that i created you can grab them on patreon but also on my website in the monthly program i also have hundreds of hours of exclusive learning material and courses on my own website so i hope you guys will look on there and otherwise have a great day and i'll see you guys the next time